be without the lure of levitating ladies and witches and warlocks, red imps and green devils and damsels in distress and all the other imagery that is captured so well by the lithographic artists and the de designers. And how many of us here uh, don't have, already have a favorite poster either hanging in their home or plan to buy one here this weekend? But what happens if your rare poster is damaged or is in poor condition? Can you restore it? Should you restore it? Well, our next speaker is here to answer those questions. He's both a collector of magic posters and the creator of magicpostergallery.com. He's a frequent lecturer at these events and others. He's a dedicated dealer, a nice guy. Welcome, please, Charles Green III. Good morning. How is everyone? Great. 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 I just have to say thanks very much for the invitation to be here. It is always a pleasure and honor for me to be in front of so many illustrious people, friends, peers, and uh, future friends. So let's get started. I love posters. There's a clicker up here. Let's see if this works. Poster restoration is the subject. MagicPosterGallery.com. All this information is there. And this is just my opinion. This is all based on my experience. I kind of say this is like sex. Everyone has a preference. <laughs> this is my preference for this information. Here's the thing, we were just talking about time frames and constrictions of time. 1870, he mentioned wood pulp. I'm going to talk about paper, specifically our interest of posters, magic posters, printed between 1890 and 1930. Generally, the information will, will refer to all kinds of printed paper. So within that time frame, there is a warning that you do not see. There is an expiration date that you do not know about. All posters printed at this time will self-destruct. Caveat. If left alone as printed. And there are examples of this destruction, this deterioration, here at the show. And this is one of them I was able to find. This poster has never been linen back, it had never been conserved, preserved, anything done to it. So over time, the paper becomes fragile, it becomes brittle, and it will deteriorate. The colors will fade away if left in certain conditions. Uh, light, humidity will get to it, perhaps mold. This is what will happen without fail to all paper posters printed at that time if left untreated. Now the question is, how do you stop this? And it is through poster restoration. It is a combination of just mechanical work, as simple as wallpapering. If you can wallpaper, if you can spackle a wall, you can get to the first few phases of restoration. And then it does come down to art and a very great skill and talent of doing touch-up work and repair. Most of the professional poster houses in America they do use poster paper from the same time period as the original poster. So someone said to me here, well, can I do this myself? Well, you can probably get only so far. Because unless you have poster paper from 1890, 1910, 1930, you're not really going to get a correct match with your poster that needs to fill in or a touch-up with the paper that you're going to use for that ultimate touch-up and, and restoration work. So you do want to have this work all done by professional. I've been very fortunate to visit poster houses and see the work being done on many, many different occasions, to see them work on many different kinds of posters, <laughs> even outside of magic posters. This is an example of a Keller poster being worked on at Jay Fields. She's doing touch-up work there with water-soluble pencils, and most of this work is meant to be reversible on some level reversible on some level so that the thought is going in, whatever they do could be reversed if necessary. The phases of poster restoration are overall, generally speaking, three. The first one is preservation. So when paper was printed, they used wood pulp. To make wood pulp, to make paper from wood pulp, you had to introduce large amounts of acid. Therefore, the paper that was produced is highly acidic. Over time, that acid within the fibers of the paper will destroy the paper, as in that example as we saw earlier. The paper will become brittle, it will become frail, it will fall apart, the colors will fade. It will happen, they will self-destruct. The first step is preservation, which means you need to stabilize the paper. This is done by two basic things. You're going to wash 
the paper, literally give it a bath. Water is run over the poster, and that will help take the acid, deacidify the paper. Some people deacidify, some people just give a neutral solution to just buffer the acid. A little technical, but that's what's going to take place. You're going to stabilize the paper. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to conserve the poster by stabilizing the poster itself. This is what you generally see when a poster has been placed on linen and has a firm backing. You can handle the poster itself. There's extra paper around it. Some people just see it as canvas. They call it linen backing, and that is stabilizing the actual paper. Brief bit of explanation. Why do we call it linen backing if there is no linen? Originally, around 1890, when posters were printed in France, they actually did use linen, they used silk, they used very lightweight materials and placed can uh, place the poster directly on them to help hold them together and for shipping and other purposes. In Japan, around the same time, around 1890s, 1910s, they were putting small print on Japanese rice paper, and that's how they were stabilizing the, the paper, but they did not actually, um, they were stabilizing the poster and the image, but not stabilizing the paper. There was still acid in there. In the 1970s, Jay Fields in New York, great lithograph house that's now based in um, Philadelphia, great restoration house that's based in Philadelphia, they took those two items of Japanese rice paper and heavy canvas, merged them together to give us now what we refer to as the standard. We call it linen backing. It's a back poster. And it's a three-fold combination. I'll get to that in a second, but it's not really linen that's used today. The last step of this is restoration, where they actually go in and they fill in the blanks, either doing touch-ups maybe along the fold lines, or perhaps literally filling in small bits and holes to doing larger chunks, and we will see an example of that later. So, going in a little deeper to separate those three overall items. When you bring in a poster that has never been mounted, that has come literally off the print, lasted fortunately for a hundred years or so, you take it in, they're going to give it a wash, and the wash will take the acid out of the paper, will help to deacidify the, the uh, paper, or buffer the acid, so it becomes pH neutral. It's not going to destroy itself. The next phase is that they're going to give it maybe a light bleach in a process of washes. And the bleach will help to take out some of maybe the browning, if there's been a little bit of staining, that will fade out because of bleaching. And this is a, really a science, because you just don't want to take Clorox, dump it over your poster, you're going to lose a poster. <laughs> don't want to do this yourself. They test posters before they do this, and they have years of experience, so do not try this at home on your Stowbridge Peller. Um, <laughs> the next phase is linen backing, and this is as simple as spackling a wall or wallpapering. Uh, it's pretty mechanical, but in a professional house, it's done on a large scale, and they stretch the canvas on frames that are generally about maybe six feet in height, maybe a little bit longer, and maybe about four feet wide, so a little bit bigger than uh, a three-sheet poster. The next phase, four out of five, is repair, small repair to holes, um, touch-ups on creases, and the last step is touch-up going in with a uh, pencil to maybe fill in color, restore color to the poster image itself. This is an example of a poster. This is Sims the Magician. Danish magician, a three-sheet poster. I believe it's uh, one of a kind. And this is a Jay Fields. The poster has been linen back. It's on a combination of Japanese rice paper and canvas. It's in the frame that's stretched out. Uh, it's been in this position for several days. They leave it there to dry because it has been wet when they place it on there. And then they will pull it out and they'll do the work of touch-up and repair. And then finally, they will cut it out, and that's what you see as you go into the hall, the examples of posters on canvas. Uh, the canvas process is basically a sandwich. It's three basic items. Canvas, which is heavyweight canvas, duck canvas. The next layer in the foundation is Japanese paper called masa, or rice paper. Today, it's machine-made, but long ago, it's uh, all done by hand. And uh, the final thing is a neutral paste. Once again, you don't want to introduce any more acid in there. You want things as organic as possible that will not destroy the poster itself. And the wheat starch uh, adhesive is what adheres everything together. This is someone doing touch-up on that same Keller uh, 
uh, poster, the centipede. They're using pencils. It's very laborious work. Um, they will do anything from small little touch-ups if you tell them. And it is a matter of, once again, of preference. Well, I only want the lines taken out along the fold. Or leave those in, because that really does represent age to me. Um, you don't want to, or, you know, this is a matter of preference, you know, have them go in and, and turn blue eyes to brown. You know, you, they could do it, but you don't want them to. Um, poster pricing, it's really not that expensive. I did ask several people here, you know, what's the question you want answered from this talk? They said, well, how much is it going to cost? I said, you know, I buy a, a $200 poster, a $1,000 poster. It's going to cost me $1,000 or more to have it linen back. No. It's reasonable. Uh, if you have a one-sheet poster, like a Whippet, it's going to cost you about $70 if there's not a lot of work needed. But just place it on linen to stabilize the poster, conserve the paper, and it'll look gorgeous long after your lifetime. Um, going up to an eight-sheet poster, $650, a lot of work involved. Restoration costs are about $40 an hour. So, you know, if you've got a few holes missing, you know, it's going to cost you a little more than this lay it down and put it on the canvas. If you do reconstruction, it's going to be a lot more expensive. You definitely want to make sure you're getting a good restoration house to do the work. It's going to cost you more. A lot of these questions are answered on magicposter.gallery.com. I am here for the entire weekend. Thanks very much for your time and have a great day.